Good morning, friends. It is June 29th, 10 a.m. This is a meeting of the Hadley Housing Authority. Um, I'm David Moskin, acting chair. To my right is Sue Oppenheimer and Harry Chadwick. To my left is Reese, and I'm going to get your last name wrong. Smith Free. What? Smith Free. Smith Free. Thank you, Reese. And Richie Whitko's longtime previous chair. So good morning. We have uh, two meetings actually today. One is to run through our normal agenda, and the other is to hear uh, the Housing Authority's annual proposed plan for fiscal year 2024. So um, let me get back to my agenda here for a second, if I can. And let's see what we've got here. Just give me one moment, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Reese. Always there. Way ahead of the rest of us. The first agenda item this month is topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Don't we usually do that at the end, but we'll do that first. And how to get through. Does anybody have anything that's not on the agenda if you came in to mention? Aaron. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, came in yesterday. Uh, so I believe that's uh, not reasonably anticipated within the 48 hours. <clears throat> um, my neighbor, who works for the uh, USA Trash or Recycling People, uh, was down at Burke's Way yesterday and uh, met somebody from management down there. My name was dropped. But uh, topic's not reasonably anticipated. I'd like an update on what goes on over there with the trash, receptacles, and should we have a dumpster there instead of uh, barrels? And there's all, excuse me? She's talking over me. Sorry, go ahead. <clears throat> gives me any respect. Um, <laughs> So I'd like an update on, on what's going on at Berks Way with the trash. Uh, and whoever the management person was there can give us an update on that. Thank you. Is that Bruce? Uh, no, we can give So I can give you an update on it. I'll okay. Give you what the trash situation is. Thank you. Thank you. We're here. We're going to hear from the executive director, Pamela Rogers regarding uh, Mr. Chadwick's question when she gives her report. Oh, anything else, Sue? Yes, um, board members came up with uh, topics to add to the agenda for this particular month's meeting, and none of the agendas that we wanted to bring up have appeared on this agenda. They were left out. The other thing I wanted to bring up in a, in a meeting down the road is uh, the fact that the office hours have changed here. We used to be Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now the office is only open Monday through Friday with Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday by appointment only. Last Friday when I came, there was even though it's supposed to be manned on Monday and Friday, I didn't see anybody here. If this is an applications office, so people come here to get an application. And last time I looked, the CHAMP's application box and the outside was empty. It didn't have any applications. Maybe since I looked the other day, it's full. But people drive here from a distance, they come here, the office isn't open, and no applications. You know, maybe you're there now, I didn't look today. Okay. And I also wanted to bring up at a, a future meeting, the if the state says that there's a 21-day turnover for these apartments when somebody vacates, why do we have five apartments sitting there now vacant? I don't, and also last summer, I think we had seven. Uh, would also request a new grievance book for the board members that came out in 2022. And the other thing is to discuss the new name of DHCD, which is EDHLC, which I've since found out is really basically um, the same agency with a new name. And I talked to Maury Healy's office about that. So I wanted to know uh, more about that. Okay, so first of all, the agenda is my responsibility as the acting chair. So if things were left over, that's on me. Um, I did mention the grievances as a agenda topic and was told that there is a new or a, a binder in the office and that that should be, and I think I was told um, enough to get us up to speed on the current DHCD grievance. 
policies and procedures. So we can uh, talk more about that later. I was told that because, or asked because of the uh, presentation today with the annual plan, if we could postpone for a month uh, the other things. You had another, these are all good topics and they can be addressed. So the apartment turnovers will be brought up during Bruce's presentation or Pamela's and um, same with the office hours. So I'm sure Pamela's going to speak to that during the ED report. So grievances, apartment turnovers, office hours, and the new name of DHD are all good topics. And um, if they aren't addressed today, we'll definitely get to them at the next meeting, okay? Sure. So again, the agenda is the chair's responsibility, so whoever's chair should be um, on top of board member requests for agenda items. I probably should have called you back to say, hey, I'm going to have to put those off for a month too. So I'll try to be better about that if I continue as a chair. All right, anything else on uh, that, that didn't make the agenda, guys? All right, number, if not, um, election of officers. Uh, we don't have we don't have any permanent positions right now. I'm the acting chair, but um, we're going to be open to volunteers and nominations for the chair, the vice chair, and the treasurer. And um, as I remember, we've already elected Reese as treasurer. So I don't think we have to do that again unless Reese has changed her mind about being her. Okay, don't hear anything over there. So we're talking about the chair and the vice chair. I'd make a motion that David Moss can be appointed full-time chair of the Hadley Housing Authority. Second that. All right, we have a second. Uh, a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? I would like to nominate Rich Witkus uh, as chair. Okay. Because well, you, I think you said you didn't want to continue. Uh, but, I'm, but happy to, I'm happy to listen to other nominations, and I don't know how many months or years I'm going to be doing okay. this, so if somebody else wants to volunteer. So, Richie, you shouldn't be nominated if you're not willing. So, I'd like to just confirm. If you're still willing to do it, I'd let, let, let you have it. Okay. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, okay. <clears throat> Any other nominations for volunteers? Uh, all right, then we're going to vote on Dave Moskin being the chair for at least one more month. I'll say two more months. All those in favor, say aye. Uh, I know for two more months. Thank you very much. Vice Chair, do we have any uh, nominations or volunteers for Vice Chair? If not, I'm oh, gonna... I'd like to nominate uh, Rich to be Vice Chair. Okay. Do I have a second? I'd like to nominate Harry Chadwick as Vice well, Chair. Okay, first we have a motion for Richie. Do we have a second on that? Yeah, I'll second. <laughs> okay, but she's seconding his nomination as vice chair. Any other discussion? I'd like to nominate Harry Chadwick as vice chair. Okay, we have another nomination. I'm not sure if that's part of the discussion or whatever. Are you willing to be vice chair? Yes, I am. You are. Okay, we have a uh, <laughs> we have a competition here. <laughs> um, I don't know. Do we need more discussion? Or we just yeah, we do need discussion. Okay, because... more discussion. Reese, some comments on oh, okay. two candidates. Well, the, uh, uh, Rich has been chair before. He knows the job. He knows clearly the vice chair job and can serve in your stead. And he has a lot of knowledge about uh, the board of commissioners functioning and how the Housing Authority and DHCD or the Executive Office of Housing and Livable, Livable Communities function. And I just think it would be a smoother transition. Okay. Any other discussion on Richie's? Sure. I think so, the fact that Richie just served is a reason not to have him serve again, to give somebody else a chance. Okay. I guess we're in the. Uh, we have to take your table. One table? How do you do this? So, I, I, Mr. Chair, can I just point out the bylaws don't require a vice chair? Don't require a vice chair? No, that's not a position in, in half of bylaws. Okay, so I'd, I'd be most comfortable knowing that there was somebody to run the meeting. I'm not here. So, that, 
uh, I forget what the bylaws require. The, the chair is the treasurer, the secretary? Or well, the secretary is de facto the executive director. Oh, really? Yeah, she's the ex official. Okay, uh -huh. Richie and Harry, I'm going to ask you guys do you guys be willing to be alternate chairs? In other words, if I can't make a meeting, vice chairs, if I can't make a meeting, yeah. one of you takes over that one. And if I can't make another meeting the second time, I can't make a meeting, the other one takes over. Is that okay with you guys? Well, let me do it. That makes sense. I prefer to have a, but the vice chair permanently until. Okay. Otherwise. All right. Uh, more discussion. I think there's more continuity that way. Yeah. Um, discussion. Yeah, I I really understand the um, desire to both give people a chance, but we are already a brand new board except for Richie. And we really, you know, all of us have been just slightly over a year or less than a year, and you're brand new, Sue. So when you, when you have a board of commissioners who's that basically naive about how the process works, Robert's Rules of Order, all this kind of thing, how DHCD or, you know, Executive Office of Housing and livable communities uh there are rules and regulations richie's familiar with but when you have a board that's basically naive it's better for the naive members to have an opportunity to learn and just to make everything smooth for transition we got really upset last year when we lost three people within months of each other let's just that that's my my opinion is that we focus on smooth. Okay. Thank you. Sue. I think that there's nothing wrong with a learning curve. And I think that even if we stumble having somebody mm -hmm. that's never been chair, that it's okay because we're not, this, is, this isn't a CEO company. This is a board meeting at a housing authority. And I think that we learn as we go, as we read the regs, as we attend meetings. That's why I feel that Richie's done his thing and down the road, if he's still on the board, he wants to do it again. That's he's more than welcome to reapply. But I'd like to see somebody else be given the opportunity. Can I just make one correction? We are a corporation. We so, are. Yeah, housing authorities are quasi governmental agencies. My name is corporate. See, I made a mistake. My first it's okay. My first <laughs> so already hurt. My first. <laughs> okay. Um, I got it. There is legal and financial responsibility here. I understand. I think we would do better having a, a, a person. I mean, Harry's yeah. got all this uh, experience as a state auditor, but it wasn't in housing, is my understanding. So housing is a whole completely different thing. And we have spent a lot of time trying to explain uh, the rules and regs for, for of the executive office to all of us. And Rich already knows them. I think we just need a smoother position. I think we both heard good, good arguments. So um, just... Harry, you still want to do it or? Sure. Okay, Rich, you still want to do it? Okay. I'll take, yeah, sure. All right, so we're gonna take a vote. All those in favor of Harry Chadwick being the vice chair, please raise your hand. Harry, you're allowed to vote for yourself. I didn't think we could vote for ourselves. Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you can. <laughs> I, I want to throw Harry into this so he learns, and we said we'll be there to help him learn. Would you yeah. hope you're okay with this? Yeah. All right. And uh, Harry, I hope you lean on Richie as much as he can yeah. do to learn what you can. Approval of minutes. The minutes are in our packet. Has everybody had a chance to look at them? Any changes? We usually read these more yep. than anybody else. Any yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, again, there's, you know, spell check and everything else. You know, that the word processing program sometimes misses things or changes things. So about the spell check kind of stuff, I've already talked to Pamela about okay. it. But so in the first paragraph of page one, 
about a mm, little more than half down. Uh, it's uh, it says she spoke with legal consultants. That's me while at the conference. The commissioners attended. Well, I was the only commissioner that attended. So it's the Mass Naro conference. We could just say that, but I was the only commissioner from here that attended, as well as the online training that is required. Okay, so we need to change that and remove the commissioners attended. Or and maybe clarify it by saying Mass Naro conference. Okay, I have no objection. Can you work that out with Pam? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, the next line is if a commissioner, it, there's actually two reasons, but it needed to be clarified. There's actually two in the first reason, which is um, the first reason is if a commissioner is new, inferring that had not attended previously, which was Sue's situation, or did not attend the deliberation on the item under discussion. So I also said that did not attend the deliberation, wasn't present at the meeting, stepped out of the room, whatever. Those are both. It's a lack of knowledge reason. Okay. okay? I have so no anybody else? If anybody objects to recent changes, speak up, please. Wow. Okay. Uh, after that is the commissioner should say the reason. Uh, they abstain. So you can eliminate the word when. Eliminate the word vote. The commissioner should say the reason they abstain when they do indeed abstain. Okay. okay. So it, it's really hard to transcribe this. I don't I don't know how Pam does it because yeah. Okay, so on page three, end of the first paragraph, uh David Moskin asked Pamela Rogers to set up a training session for commissioners with Gary DePace to explain. That is not a correct. Sorry about that. I had a question for later. Okay. So uh, let me see. Page four is just a spelling error. Uh, error uh, it was autocorrect and didn't get picked up. Okay. So also she takes umbrage. Umbrage is different than umbrage the town. So that'll be corrected. Uh, page five. About halfway down, uh, ex explain that the executive session minutes won't be made public due to protecting the tenant's privacy. Should be period and then capital, both former and current. Okay. Typos, you could. You'll okay, so uh, page, uh, still on page five, about three quarters or three fifths of the way down, it was explained that I'm not sure about fossil fuel systems. I don't know where that came from. So I don't, we maybe have to go back and get the exact from the video, Pam, does that make sense? The fossil fuel, I believe when we were talking about the mini splits. And okay, so we just need to check what the, what the video says, because fossil fuel systems doesn't really make sense here. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so. Uh, third line from last same page uh, five. Harry Chadwick said it was an AUP. Corinth agreed upon procedure, and then it says agreed upon procedure again. So we can eliminate one of those. So okay. next one is. Oh, never mind. Okay, that's it. Can you believe it? Thank you for reading it carefully. Thank you. And Pamela, thank you for your hard work on these. I wish the paragraphs were shorter, but uh, uh, you're, you're doing a great job. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to. I, on uh, page one, approval of minutes, the one, two, three, four line down, it's a very disjointed sentence. It says Sue Oppenheimer pointed out that she felt the part of the meeting pointing out that Harry Chadwick came in late and David Moss, who was the main gist of that whole thing, other than the fact that it's poorly written the sentence. I just said it because it was five minutes. I said, do we have to write in the in the minutes? See, when someone walks in five minutes late, it's not as though were, they were an hour late. And when someone walks away, steps away, you'd think that they stepped away from the whole meeting and didn't come back. Maybe would have just maybe taken a bathroom break. Mm -hmm. So I think that needs to be 
removed. And on the same page, page one, the fourth line up from the bottom, Sue Oppenheimer pointed out there's a mistake on page three about the eternal controls, allowing the former commissioner to sign checks. This is wrong. It was the executive director. I have no idea what it's that's just doing it. It doesn't really it's it doesn't really say anything. It's very confusing if you read it. On page two, um, it says uh, Sue Oppen never said the tenants are feeling uncomfortable about the late fee, to which Pamela Rogers explained that is only two tenants that feel uncomfortable. And I think that kind of comment should not be made by an executive director, you know, that it's only two tenants. We have no idea who who lives here and what and what their thought process is with. So I think something like that should not be there are, excuse me, mentioned. Our, tra our minutes are transferred. Yeah. I mean, it's an absolute transcript of every word that's spoken. right. But I think that something like that should be excluded. It might be on them, but I mean, making a comment about tenants is not a it's not no, and that comes that way from the board as well. Yeah. Right. So we'll right. Um, last one minutes. Um, you're bringing up some points that may be valid to discuss. Right. But right now we're just checking this for accuracy. Well, well the accuracy is the disjointed sentences. It doesn't matter. Okay. There's, there's, there's certain sentences okay. that don't make sense. If anybody read them, they wouldn't understand what, okay. what was being said. Um, the other thing is that, um, let me see. Yeah. I think there's okay. Sorry. Well, there's more. Maybe we, can we come back to this? Yeah. No. Probably not. But uh... can I make a point, sure. As Pamela said, when it comes to minutes, we can't change what people said because we don't like how it came out. I didn't mean change. I meant the fact that it shouldn't have never been said in the first place. It's, it's not. Well, there were there were several things that shouldn't have been said, even by a board of commissioner that made the statement, because yeah. it's day to day. However, right. th then you get untoward comments back that you don't like. So we need to be very careful. And, and I'm just saying this because now you're a board of commissioner, but we need to be careful as a board of commissioner to not bring up day to day things. Okay. So this is a review of the minute. Yeah. It, it says here that there's three vacancies at Golden Four on page four, and there's five vacancies. That needs to be corrected. No. At but the that, time, it was so, three. Yeah. So no, this is a record of what you know, was discussed or said at a meeting. If there's more well, information, <laughs> that's a different topic. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. So when do we bring things up? To go into more depth and actual on the agenda itself. We're going to be hearing about vacancies uh, shortly. Um, all right, so I'm going to entertain a motion to approve these minutes as corrected. Not just yet. Like, well, I have one other thing. Yeah. On page six, uh, when the vote for the audit was taken, you, Mr. Vice Chairman, at the time, acting chairman, voted no pending the discussion with Gary DePace. That meeting did not happen, did not take place. So, but there should be some more discussion or more uh, identification here why you voted no, because you said you were voting no until we would meet with the auditor there in the case. That's not in. And so I don't know where the audit is left off, other than it was voted down at this meeting. I plan to bring it up again, but didn't make the agenda this for this meeting. Why it was left off, I don't know. but. I, you had more to say about meeting with the auditor, Gary DePace, than what's in here. So do you recall what you were saying? Why you voted no? A month ago? Uh, what's, what was the vote on? The vote was for the independent objective audit. It was voted down. You said you voted um, no until we could. Right. You and I were going to meet with Gary. All right. So I don't, we're supposed to be going over the minutes here, and I don't remember exactly what the reason was other than but it's not. I think at the time was and is today that you or we, you and I, were going to meet with Gary DePace. All right. You you talked to Gary DePace. He. Um, we had established a meeting to meet. Right. 
and then uh, he goal. discussed that with the executive director and that meeting never happened yeah so my goal at the time my goal at the time was to get you either comfortable or uncomfortable with what his process was auditing his own work and this is really a different agenda item which i would like to discuss today but um, as far as the minutes go as i remember it a month ago, my research really know was that the goal was to get you comfortable with how he audits his own work. And if you could not get comfortable with that, then we had a topic right to talk. We had a meeting set up and that meeting didn't take place. Right. So okay. Gary Gary has offered to come and talk to the whole board to do a training. I think that's a great idea. And um, I look forward to that. I don't know who's going to set that up. But we should set that up as soon as possible because Mr. Chavik, I want you to be comfortable with the process here since you have a background in auditing and such. So my thinking at the time, if that's your question, is that I wanted you and Gary to have a professional discussion about what his process was. And for you to come back to the board and say, I understand now what he does. I'm okay with it or not. So I guess um, that didn't happen. So we'll do it when Gary comes in to train or discuss with the whole board what his process was mr chairman yeah but since this was already discussed and voted on to have this meeting and it didn't happen we can't overlook the fact that it didn't happen and maybe down the road gary's coming but it, it, it didn't get it didn't happen one week. it's true there has to be people taking responsibility for their behavior yeah, i don't know why it didn't happen exactly yes Reese. well one thing was is if you'll notice in the minutes it said for the board of commissioners and somehow or other it, it, in your communication to set this up somehow it then became just Harry and you and that is not what the board voted so we cannot ever as board of commissioners decide to take an action that was not voted by a quorum on the board we cannot independently go meet with a fee accountant or anyone else, another housing authority, a uh, anyone else without a quorum vote of the board, you did not have that to eliminate the rest of the board as participants in this. Meeting. Okay, I, I disagree with that opinion, but I hear you. I respect your opinion. <clears throat> Anybody else on this? So I think the answer is going to be Gary's going to come in and we're going to all say, like, this is good enough for us, yeah, all of us, um, or not. Since Harry was the one that was most vocal about being uncomfortable with the idea of a auditor or accountant auditing his own uh, work, to me that was the simplest, fastest, and allowed uh, process. Get Harry together with Gary, see if um, Harry can get comfortable, um, and if not, go back to the full board. Not even the chair has that authority to disregard a quorum vote. Okay. Um, Thank you. We can talk further about that. I do have a different understanding of what uh, individual board members can and cannot do. Um, so are we doing the annual plan right now? Is that you next? still have to vote to approve the minutes. Oh, okay. So can we approve the minutes and we'll have further discussion on the topics that we we still want to work out? Uh, I'd like to make a point. Yeah. We have had many uh, from three different commissioners questions about the minutes. Uh, it has now jumbled. In other words, if you say approve the minutes, whose corrections okay. are you approving? Fair enough. I agree. Can we make a suggestion sure. that we um, make the corrections and then and table it and bring them back next year? Yeah. Okay. That's fine with me. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay with that. Let's vote. Right. So we're voting to table the minutes from last month until they are corrected and to vote on them next month's meeting as corrected all in uh do i have that motion please make the motion thank you i'll second have a second any discussion on that all in favor aye i think it's unanimous thank you <coughs> okay um, so on my agenda it says annual plan five-year plan is is um are we doing that now please so we actually did the annual plan um, on Tuesday, we covered the entire annual plan and went through it and I gave a presentation on it. That was the scheduled hearing that was scheduled almost two months ago. It was set up for Tuesday. 
I mean, we didn't want them back to back, so we actually moved the board meeting to Thursday, so it would be after the plan. So I'm going to give a little summary of the plan, but I'm not going to cover everything. I was almost two hours here on Tuesday covering this, and we don't have that kind of time, I'm sure. But I will cover a few of the slides and answer questions that you may have, um, and then it'll be required, you know, for the vote to approve the plan. So I'm sorry, Bruce. Your understanding was that a board meeting was called, a uh, board commissioner's meeting was called for Tuesday to review the annual plan. No, the the um, Tuesday is a public hearing. Yeah. So the public hearing is where I put out the up the uh, I kind of cover the annual plan. We also hear from the residents of any items they would like to see included, and so we include that when we submit the annual plan. And we did have some comments. Um, on Tuesday from from the residents on things they'd like to see in the five five year plan, you know, so for the capital improvement. So what I'm going to do is um, just, again, cover the annual plan. And it was, um, you know, the hearing, the way it works is the hearing is set up in advance of the board meeting voting on it. So the hearing already happened. We, we had a hearing and that was. And there was no commissioners there, correct? I, there was, she the, there was one commissioner here, oh, there was two commissioners. Two members. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there was two commissioners here. Right. Um, and so your understanding is the commissioners were invited to aware of that meeting? It, yes. it was a public meeting. Matter of fact, when we set the meeting, when we set up the date for this meeting, it was discussed that we were going to be having the hearing on Tuesday. So we said, well, we, we shouldn't have them right back to back. So why don't we make yes. the board meeting Thursday? I don't know if anyone remembers that, I but that was, that was the discussion. Too. Yeah. So, so I'm just clarifying that, but I want to get on with what I have so I'll have, you know, save some time. And um, I did answer a lot of the questions yesterday. I will be happy to answer questions as, as time permits today, as you permit the time. Um, but let me just go through the presentation. That's okay. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> I did cover real briefly that the annual plan is intended to provide insight into the authority's operations and plans for the coming fiscal year as they affected by the state um, public authority. And our fiscal year, by the way, is September, uh, October 1st to September 30th. October 1st, that's the fiscal year. So <clears throat> when we're talking about fiscal year 24, it starts October 1st. All right, so the annual plan, and this was basically my outline of the plan, <clears throat> excuse me, was proposed capital improvement plan, which is a five-year plan. I'm going to shut off a couple of lights. It might help this show up a little bit. There's one over here as well. Does that help? Yeah. Yes. Right. It's those windows up there that I, I can't seem to block. So this is basically the outline that is in the annual plan packet that was put out. It was, uh, it was put out almost two months ago. Um, I took this right out of that, that, that list, the proposed... Uh, Five-year plan, the proposed maintenance and repair plan, <clears throat> the current operating budget. I only have basically a summary of that, the total revenues coming in and what the expenses were, 22 and 23. And, um, and then also the responses to the performance management review findings. Um, I'll cover that item as I come to it, but basically we didn't have a PMR this year. The way that works is the, the, the housing authorities that have um, did really well on their PMR last year, performance management review. They don't have to have a PMR next year. Um, and it gives the opportunity for the, the agency, the D, used to be DHCD, now it's the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities, EOHLC is the <laughs> accurate acronym at this point. Um, so they, 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 they gives them more time to do a deeper dive into the housing authorities that need help. So the housing authorities that have a lot of, there's basically three ratings you get for the PMR, no finding, operational guidance, and corrective action. So that uh, the housing authorities that have a lot of corrective action and operational guidance, they have to get a PMR every year. If the housing authority has mostly no findings and maybe very few operational guidance, they don't, they don't uh, and they have a score system where they decide what that is. They don't have a PMR every year. So when it comes to that point on the PMR, I'm just going to say we didn't have one. So there's, not, there's nothing to report on it. So, so that's uh, just co covering the agenda here. 
Uh, list of the Housing Authority policies. I just have a list, the dates that they were voted on by the Board of Commissioner. It lets you see what the policies are that were voted on, what the dates were that they were voted on. And then um, we also have a list of waivers. Same thing, we don't have any waivers. That This is where I would cover it, but we don't have any waivers. And then there's a tenant satisf satisfaction survey. I really am not gonna take time to go over that. It is in that packet, it kind of shows um, the differences between small housing authorities in Western Mass, Hadley Housing Authority, and then all of the state, the entire state. So it gives those three, and um, we only had 18 that participated in that survey from this housing authority at 667 Development Golden Court. So when you see those results, that those are what the, those are based on. <clears throat> the annual plan was mandated by something called an act relative to local housing authorities in uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 121B, um, Section 28A. It also the LTO, the um, Local Tenant Organization, regulated by 760 CMR 6.09. Just for references, I like to put this slide up here. <laughs> God gave me common sense. Obviously, they got to work a little bit on the spelling, but most of these regulations were built with common sense. I couldn't resist. I took that at a housing authority doing inspections one day. <laughs> Somebody marked that in the basements, you know, so. Uh, so this is our developments here. We basically have the 705 Berkway Apartments. There's six buildings, which are duplexes. So that means we have 12 units over there. And then the Golden Court Apartments, there's nine buildings, 40 units. Um, one of those buildings is this building here. So there's really eight buildings with residents plus the office community room um, here. So we have a total of 52 units uh, at our development. And uh, <clears throat> looking at the... Uh, yearly awards from DHC formula funding. I just wanted to point out that they target their most urgent capital needs in the CIP in the first three years of the CIP. So we have, we're gonna have a, we're gonna show you a five year plan. It basically is gonna spread out the years, you know, all the way out to maybe like 28, 20, 28, 29. And then the first three years is funded. Those funds come from the legislator voting on how much funds they're gonna to provide to, I'm gonna call it the department, which is DACD, it's a little easier <laughs> than the whole acronym. So they provide funds to the department for capital improvements, and those funds are spread out to the 238 housing authorities across the state, and it's based on the unit count. So that's why I covered the units first. With the amount of units that we have, depends, shows what kind of funds we get. Boston Housing Authority would get a lot more funds, than Hadley Housing Authority. And then there's some other even smaller <laughs> than Hadley Housing Authority, like Hatfield over there, I think is like 30 or so. You know, um, so they have less units, they would get less overall capital funds. Um, but there is a formula for it, that's why they call it formula funding, okay? Um, so the first three years are based on the actual awards made to the LHA. Well, years four and five are based, based on estimated planning amounts. So what we're doing is we know roughly what we get every year, Let's go ahead and put something in year four and five, you know, just so that we can always have some items in the plan and discussing them and prioritizing them. Sometimes things come up, we'll move those, those things up. Like if there was, a, if there was something that came up we, um, uh, where they needed attention quicker, you know, um, like paving the parking lot right there, that's, that's like four and five because you'll see the expenses, I get to it. Um, we might have to move that up if it like deteriorated, fell apart through this bad, rough snow season, a lot of frosty or something, we might move it up. So it's good to have it in the plan somewhere, you know, uh, as we see a need. So <clears throat> here is the first three years of the five-year plan. This is the funding of it. So this 396,000 is kind of like the base funding. It's the, it's the gross amount but they start taking funds away from that amount that, make, that are not spendable for our projects. For example, they want us to keep an emergency reserve. So out of that three years, they took 10% off of $39,000. says this, keep that aside for emergencies. Don't use it for roofs and windows and, and whatever else. Keep that separate. So it's not really spendable when we say this 390,000. And then they, they also, um, so that leaves a net of 357. These are planned spending. We actually have um, funds that were planned, 310,000 
actual plan for the first three years. So these are the items that we already have, you know, in, in the plan that says this is where that money is going to go. That other bit, the other amount is going to be, would be used for, you know, anything that would come up. But the uh, unrestricted formula funding down here is 306 because they also had to set ADA money aside. So money has to come out of the top of that three year. Now it comes down to basically funds awarded by DACD that we can use over the next three years is 306,000. So if you think of 306,000 divided by three years, that's like 102,000 a year, right? Roughly. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at some of the um, plans that we have. So there were some other funds that came in and, and this, these funds here, the 74,000, this is an addition to the capital improvement plan. Um, basically, the, the, it was in this position that I'm, I'm doing, and before me, it was Chad Howard. He wrote a request to the Community Preservation Act Fund and said, we would like to have you donate some funds for our window project to help the, the, the building envelope here. And so, he, he was successful and they awarded us $75,000. So this window project has gotten quite expensive, but we're helped by the CPA of 75,000. I've been in touch with the CPA um, all along because they're gonna require a sign. Once construction starts, they'll, they'll put a sign up and it's gonna say that uh, they are, um, some of the funds were provided by the CPA, okay? And so that means we had a total of that 443,000 if you add those funds in. This other funds was 58,000 was opera funds that came in um, and, I'll, and I'll get to where we're expending some of those funds as well. So our, during the pandemic, they came up with uh, some extra funds for the housing authorities to help with some of these because they knew that you know that formula funding what they, they provide for us is only like a drop in the bucket of what's needed. If you take all of these projects into the capital planning system, they need over a billion dollars worth of funds, but the legislator only approves like 100 million a year, you know, and it divides up between all the housing authorities. So it can only go so far. They, 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 they can only fund so much. But we, we, we did get the, that, uh, those ARCA funds that came in, which was above and beyond. So I'm going to get through the presentation and then we'll answer that question. Can we put the air conditioner back on or little? Why is it's getting really warm in here? It's okay with me. If uh, I don't, I don't know if uh, Stop the, 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 the hearing. Maybe. But one. the. Uh... All right. So this is our. This is the five-year plan. And you can see we go from 24, uh, 23 was the remaining, and then 24 through 28, okay? And so that window project, it's $245,000 is what that project came up to. Now this, remember this document was put out uh, about two months ago. Last month, the board voted on a change order that came in that was for $28,000. Once they did the mock-up, they found that they had to, there was, uh, there was some more work that had to be done for these windows and for the, specifically the PVC panels to go on the front needed some construction work done. That came to $28,000. The board voted to approve that last month. So this number is actually going to be higher. I can't change this document. This is the document that was put out two months ago, you know, but it just kind of shows that the, the where those funds take off and where they go to. Um, <clears throat> This showed 155,000 of it coming in there into, in from the fiscal year 24. We also had that CPA funds of 75,000, okay? So down here, Berkeley Apartments, this is, you can see in the year 24, we, we, we have some improvements for unit turnovers. Now these unit turnovers, a lot of these units have been not had a, 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 a full remodeling in many, many years. And I had one recently when I started last year, we, we did not have approved funds for it and we had to get it done. So we actually ended up using a lot of our reserve and it was almost $50,000 to turn over one of these units. So these 11,000 doesn't go very far. You know, that's like the kitchen cabinets, you know? I mean, I had new floors, 
downstairs, floors upstairs, windows put in, bathroom remodeled. All this, all this cost a lot of funds, and so that doesn't go very far. But I just want you to have an idea when we have these funds in here, they 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 don't usually stretch that far, <laughs> you know. But uh, we have it in there for anything that comes up in the unit turnovers. We have some funds in there to try to cover them. And as long as this gets approved, I'll have them to use next time. Last year, I didn't have them to use. I didn't have funds that were approved for turnovers. So this replace hot water heater, it's not really hot water heaters because we have boiler systems that heat the hot water, they're tanks, they're just storage tanks. Well, they have reached their life expectancy. So part of our plan is to replace the tank, the storage tanks. The water's heated from the boiler and, and those tanks are past their life expectancy. They're, they're a lot less expensive than if they were, you know, heat generating uh, boilers, hot water heaters. And this is the last one because we've done almost all of it. We only have one or two left. Okay. And so, um, oh, last last year's, I, I guess I had a note down here. Last year's CIP was 184. It's just, it's just pointing out how the plan changes. You know, uh, we had a five-year plan last year and we had the windows. Last year it was 184. So I actually pulled this right off of the plan from last year. And it was 183,901. And now you can see it's it's gone up 245. By the time we went, went to bid, we had multiple bidders on it. We had a couple that were really close, like a few hundred dollars apart. And even though that's what their bids were, it ended up bringing the price way up. The bid was over 190,000. Plus, you have to add in all the the, the designer fees, uh, permit fees, and there's a there's a lot of other um, costs that go into it on top of the bid of the contract. So <clears throat> we also have here um, some of the five year plan was this chimney. Now this chimney was actually in the plan way out four or five years last year but some people complained about the chimneys they were really concerned about it so we also had some ARPA funds come in so I said hey why don't we take those ARPA funds let's get that chimney moved up so we're actually paying for these uh those chimneys Do I have it on this slide yeah um here it is right here so this this chimney we're paying for getting some of this chimney work done um sooner rather than later with that ARPA funds. And then another thing that we added that was a concern that wasn't in the five-year plan before was these rear doors. It's hard for me to see it. There they are, rear, rear doors, $98,000. This is just one phase. The, the actual cost to replace the whole framing and the doors at all, all 40 units is, I have, uh, 139,000, and that is just phase, that's phase one and two, and then there's a phase three of another $64,000. So we had the project managers from the regional capital assistance team come up with these numbers for us. They did their research. They said, this is what it's gonna cost to put those doors in. All, every component of the housing authority is in something, it, it, it's something called the, our capital improvement plan. That in the CIP, we actually have an inventory of every little component. The windows have a, have a lifespan. The doors have a lifespan. The roof has a lifespan. It's all spelled out there, and it also shows what the replacement cost is. So when we say we need to put the doors in, we go into that system, and the system tells us, this is what it's going to cost you to replace those doors today. And so that's why we come up with that $139,000. It's almost $200,000. Remember, we get $102,000 per year is what we have to play with and we have 200,000 just for the doors and we have 245,000 for the windows that we're doing so you can see how that money is just used up very quickly when we start doing some of these large projects they're very necessary but the money goes quickly um, so roof replacement this 15,000 you can see this is way out 26 and 27 because that's the soonest we could put it in the budget 26 27 and that's just this roof here the roofs that are covering the, um, where the residents are have been replaced. They're newer than these roofs. They're in better shape than these roofs. This roof's not as in great shape. It wasn't, it wasn't servicing tenants, so it wasn't done at the time. But we do have it in the plan because we did have a leak. I actually had a leak fixed 
this, you know, about six months ago, um, that was leaking down into the boiler room from up on this roof. So I had a company come in and do those repairs. Kind of just mended it a little bit, but it all needs to be redone. Um, and then you have down here, repave the driveway. Now you can see this cost is $137,000. This is going all the way to 28 and, and, and we're putting 37,000 into it. We still need another 100,000 between 28 and 29. We need another 100,000 to be able to repave the, the, the parking. Okay, so um, I have a paving project at another housing authority and I went to look at it and get it repaired and it was way too much to get repaired. And I looked back in the records and I found out it had just been done several years ago, but it needs to be done again because they didn't do it right. So some, they just did a little resurfacing on the top of it and it didn't last, it, it, it was horrible. So when we do these projects, we want to do them thoroughly. We want them to last. We don't want to have to replace it before I can do anything else at, at, at that development. I'm already looking at doing a new pavement. It's in bad condition. I have to, I have to get, uh, you know, I have to take care of and patch it because it's got, it's dangerous condition. It's got trip hazards. So I'm just saying, uh, you know, some of these things we have to push way out because of how much everything else costs. Um, so here's some of the other funding that we have. So the Golden Court windows, I already told you there was $75,000 CPA funds came in. And this is addition to our formula funding. This, um, the, these here, both the, the 44,000 plus the 13,000, we had 60, almost $70,000 is what we had from those ARPA funds. And so this is where we're, we're putting those ARPA funds. These items, on the five-year plan last year, we're pushed way out, but we said, let's bring them in since we have extra funds. Let's take some of those that are further out. We'll get them done sooner. So we actually have with this chimney project, it is going right on right now. The ARPA funds are paying for it. I've already had the architect out and he's doing you know, the design for what has to be done. Our cap came out with us, the regional capital assistance team, project manager, and myself, we all met up here we had to have testing done, believe it or not, even though they were outside chimneys, we had, had testing done for asbestos. <laughs> and that was part of the expense of the project, but they actually did find some in the sealant at the roof level, <laughs> you know, when you're at the bottom of the chimney. So they had to look at everything just in case we have to go that far. The plan is not to go that far, it's to replace where they damaged the roof. So um, that's just a, a, a little bit of the, the funding plan. So here, you can see, um, okay, this one, this is just last year's plan. <laughs> I just threw it in as a comparison. Remember I told you that the, the windows showed 189, this year it's 245. So I just brought in the, I just brought in the last year to compare this 245 to the 183, what it was before. All right, if you wanted to see what, why do we have a five-year plan last year, now we have another five-year plan while well, things got shipped around. ARPA money came in, you know, needs, needs came, came up, costs went up on the windows, and so we had to adjust a lot of these things that we had, you know, last year. So that was basically the capital improvement part of the plan, where, where, where our funds are going. A lot of it's going to these windows that are coming in. Um, the, the, the window project had a change order last month. We, we came out and did uh, it, uh, another mock-up on this window. You see it's boarded up over here. That, that, that they did a mock-up and they looked at the rest of the project and the original plan didn't replace the trim out here. So we are looking to do another change order or it's a smaller amount. And we also had put the, the little grids in the windows, they call mullions. We included it with the architect and somehow in an addendum it got taken out. But I noticed it before the windows got ordered. So the wind, I was like, how come they took these out? We want them in there, you know. It's gonna, they're gonna be nice new windows with the, with the mullions in them. And it's just gonna look very uniform, consistent. It's gonna, they're nicer to have. So I noticed that, so they're gonna put those back in. So that, I think it was like a couple thousand dollars to put in the mullions back in all the windows before they got ordered. So, that's why that project got held up, in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> that project is, is, uh, is still going to be, you know, five to six weeks out from the time, you know, the windows got, got ordered. All these changes that had to get approved. All right. So 
the rest of this is really just the maintenance uh, plan. There is a, a maintenance and repair plan in place. There's there's a there's a plan on how we do maintenance here, and the the bottom line goal is to make sure that the units are decent, safe, and sanitary. I like to throw in in good repair. Um, we actually had someone at the meeting on Tuesday complained about their door, and, and it said maintenance was over there right away to fix it. So you know we do have ways to take care of it. If you make these things known to us, we we, we take care of those work orders. So. The maintenance repair plan basically is outlined with the classification of maintenance tasks. We have an emergency response system, so if there's any emergency, 24 7, 365, if they need to touch with somebody. If it's a fire alarm that goes off, I actually you know, <laughs> get notified personally, and it has happened midnight, 2 a.m., whatever. Um, but to, then, then we determine whether or not we have to send maintenance out as, as well on, on those calls. But 24 7, uh, 365, our maintenance will respond. We have a normal maintenance response system. There, there is procedures and priorities that we have in place with our plan. We have a work order management system. We have a system that keeps track of all of the work orders. Um, you see reports every month that we decided to, sh you know, put in there. They're not votable, but it's just information to show we have this in place. We also have um, ma uh, preventive maintenance schedule. We have regularly. In fact, I saw someone on Tuesday when I was on my way in cleaning the gutters out, you know, something like that is a preventive maintenance um, plan item. And we have routine maintenance. So we have regular work that's done cleaning. You'll also see that on the work order report that we clean the laundry room, we clean the floors and so forth. And then we have unit inspections. So <clears throat> this um, next section is the operating budget, okay? Again, I do not have a lot of information on it. You're going to see it's very, very basic information. Um, and it's, it shows the budget and compares 22 and 23. I will mention, you know, down the bottom, it talks about this per unit per month. We call it the PUM. And that's where you take the totals of the expenses and it comes up with, uh, you divide it by the units. You have a per unit per month, what the expenses are. And then you have the, the income, the revenue. Uh, as a list here, same thing. It's going to show the per unit per month. So it gives you a quick look to see, you know, how are we comparing with the ex actual expenses to the actual money that has been received. All right. So this is just basic. I took multiple pages you might see on the report, and I just summarized them on one because I thought it was great to see the, the revenue and the expenses on one page. You can kind of see them all together here. So I'm going to pop on this side just so that facing you when I'm, when I'm looking at these. Um, so here you see the 2022 approved budget, 238,000 was from rents. Operating subsidy is 92,000 for the total revenue of 330. That was the budget. The actual amounts received was 224 compared to budgeted 238. So they were short 3.4% of the, of the amounts received for rents. We did not get as much rent as we expected to get based on, you know, what the rent levels were. This operating subsidy, so this fair market value of what the units should be rented at, and the occupants that are here can only pay a certain amount of that fair, fair market value. So the subsidies come from the department where they, they provide extra funds to help make up the difference between the two. And so... Um, 2023, the approved budget said there should be 232,000. We should get in rents and we should get 139,000 in subsidy. And sometimes those increase. Sometimes they increase based on the amount of rents that we received. Or a total of 374,000 was the budget for 2023. So this is that um, per unit per month of the PUN. So you can see the total there was about $600 per unit revenue that we, we had to come in for the units. Now, this is the expenses. So we the budget approved 333000 and the actual expenses was 335000 The um, The actual amounts received was 338 In 2022, we spent 422 It was budgeted 338 but we spent 422 so we spent quite a bit more than what was budgeted in 2022. In 2023, 
the budget was 374 and the approved budget was 389 that we actually expended. So the change was in minus 7.9% we were short. And here's that number, $623 per unit was expended. Those were the expenses, $600 per unit was what came in. So we were short on the revenue coming in to cover the cost. So we had reserve, that's a good thing. We had a reserve in this case to cover these things because things, things come up that have to be dealt with. So really, um, this is just a part, another snippet of what that report that came out. It just shows in one page the revenues across the board, the expenses, and then the difference. So we were short $23 per unit, um, the, the expenses over what was actually, which actually came in, okay? So line item by line item is on that report. I'm not really gonna cover line item by line item. I just gave you a little summary about what's going on with the budget. And um, if there's any questions about that or anything else I've covered, you can let me know and maybe I can get some help in the room answering that. I mentioned earlier at the beginning that we really don't have anything for PMRs. I explained how that works. We didn't have a PMR, so there's no notes. I did say that we're gonna have a list of the policies. And so that's what this list is here. I'll give you a minute to look at that. I'm not answering questions about what policies we should have or anything. I'm just letting you know and for information, these are the policies that have been in place. I might just point out down the bottom here, you can see language access plan was just voted in 2022. Um, reasonable accommodation uh, plan was policy was put in place this year, 2023. And so you can see that there's different um, years that these things were, were put in place. So there's some that were quite a few years ago, like the PEC policy, I think someone pointed out was like 2006 or something. That was, it really hasn't changed. You know, the, the PEC policy is effective the way it was written. Does, isn't something that has to be changed all the time. So um, again, these are all listed in that, in that plan. Um, just presenting that for you. There is quite a few policies. Um, the policies, Sometimes are put out, because I used to work at Department of Housing, and so at the department we said, well, you know, a lot of the housing authorities are really not dealing with, like, I'm gonna use air conditioners as, a, as an example. So we put out a policy, we put out a public housing notice that says we recommend that the housing authorities would put in place a policy saying, you know, your air condition should make, be a certain BTU so that you don't have to rewire the unit in order to put that in. It, and um, you know that it should come out in the winter and so forth. We we basically had a policy that we gave as a sample, and then the housing authorities. It was up to them to implement that policy. So the housing authority would take our draft that the department gave them, DACD gave them, and then they would edit that, and then they present it to the board, and the board would vote it. So that's basically how a lot of these policies come into place. Sometimes it's because somebody identified a need. We said, well, we need something in writing that we can manage that policy and put a policy in place. It's presented to the board. The board can certainly, you know, discuss it and talk about it and make changes. And, and then the board actually votes on those policies. But that's how these policies came into being. Do you have anything to add to that, Pamela, or is that? To the policy, you know, just some of them, uh, like the language are accessible and the reasonable accommodation thing on being grievance policy. Um, those were, again, oh, affirmative action plan templates coming right from the Department of Housing yeah. so that we follow. Um, and we, the last three that we approved here were requirements. DHCD said you, you really have to do them. You could make tweaks to them, but you had to have policies in place to cover those things. So if the board sets the policy and management implements it, when these new uh, policies came out, I understood that they were verbatim from DHCD, now you're saying that they can be tweaked. How I would, how it was conveyed to me is that when it, when it supposedly these last ones that just got voted in 2023, they were exactly the way, worded the way DHCD. Now you're saying that we could tweak them. So that's, I'm hearing two different things. Because we, we use them exactly as DHCD, we did not tweak them. Again, they're, they're based on law and regulations, and it's just easier to follow the laws and the regulations. 
and you can't make a policy that's contrary to that. So BACD did a great job. You, you could tweet words here or there, but you really have to follow the policy. No, I think they did a good job. I just thought it was, I, I misunderstood. I thought we had to follow verbatim anything we came nope, to. When we, when we sort of con contradicted this pack, this training packet, which says that the board helps set, I mean, basically sets policy and the management. But when we were working on policies, the board that approved the policies were advised that there could be minor tweaks. But again, it's just very straightforward. You know, and if, and if I could just, uh, I'm, almost, I'm, almost, I'm almost done with this. Uh, I'm just on those policies, um, it depends on what it is, too. Because some things that come down from the state, state pretty much, you know, there's regulations that they base their policy on. Other things like maybe an air condition policy or pet policy, we might tweak it for the needs of the housing authority. So it all depends on where it came from and how it was initiated. But um, the waivers, again, we don't have any waivers to talk about. It was one of the agenda items on, on in the packet. If there were any waivers, I would have addressed them and presented them and said what we did about them. You know, but we have not requested any waivers um, for here. Waivers when there's a certain requirement and then we're not able to meet that requirement. I'll just give you a, it's probably not real accurate, but it's an, an example is uh, vacancies. You know, if we had to turn over a vacancy in a certain amount of time, we couldn't do it for one reason or another. We get a waiver for that, and we do get those waivers. So we do have waivers. So waivers in this instance under the ABLE plan, that's not the waiver they're talking I'm sorry, Bruce, that they're talking about. Yeah. They would be talking about um, a different, a higher level of, of a waiver. Because we do, uh, yeah. Hadley does have waivers for vacancies in place. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I kind of was really explain how waivers work, but the, the, the waivers are for, like, rent collecting and other policies timelines if if we need to have our pmr by september 1st and we were like you know there's some kind of staffing issue okay. a major issue you yeah. could request a waiver or something of that but we we've never read so the only other part of this presentation is the surveys again um the, the information's there i don't really want to take a lot of time to go into it. i did i did cover all of this um, and uh, on Tuesday, you know, I kind of went through all of these and just kind of showed what it is. We are pretty comparative to the rest of the state and the small housing authorities in Western Mass. You know, so if I go through, you can almost see this, the, the pie charts are pretty similar. Um, there's not a big grass, drastic difference, you know, um, outdoor maintenance. You, know, you can see we're a little better than some. So um, this is heat going out so we did pretty good with heat not going out for more than 24 hours some of these places had heat out for over 48 hours that's what that red pie chart is so we're thankful that we've always been able to keep the heat on here we should we got new boilers a couple years ago right <laughs> and again these survey results are all based on 18 people out of the 40 people that received them 18 turned them in and that's what these have all based on so um just whether or not you're feeling safe here at the housing authority um and actually, you know, I, I will point this out because I, I was concerned that how come people aren't safe? Well, it says the reason that they're not safe is uh, outdoor lighting, right? So you can see the, we're kind of high. This is the, the concern that we are here. Not with, windows. Yeah, windows. It's windows. Oh, windows. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the windows weren't being secured. So um, the, the windows, obviously, we have a window project to fix that. I actually, when I was a Department of Housing, I came here and wrote up the windows that they, you can't lock these things, that, you know, but now that I've been here and actually sat there and Tetris the windows, you can actually take certain windows out and flip them around and put them in different orders and voila, they lock. <laughs> so, so, so go back and forth the score you gave us? Uh, <laughs> um, I, think it, I think it still ended up a no finding, but uh, I, yeah. did, I, I did address it. But, and the reason I addressed it, and it's kind of a good point, this is part of the PMR is the facility management specialist. That's what I was. We'll come out and do an inspection. If they see something that's a safety violation, if you cannot lock your window, it was a safety violation. And so that's why I wrote it up when I was with the department. And the housing authority, Mary, Mary knew this because she'd been here many years. She knew that they all locked. You just have to, somebody moved them, took them out to wash them, put them back in wrong, and they didn't lock but they do all lock and they are confusing and we are getting new ones real soon. <laughs> so, um, 
So again, uh, overall safety, I think we're pretty good. And so that was, that was tried a, a, a quick, a quick uh, presentation based on compared to on Tuesday. Any questions with that? In 2022, what drove that $84,000 uh, overage on the budget? What were the main things that happened that you did? Yeah, I, without having that list here, um, it was pandemic time. I don't know what. Uh, well, this was 2022. That station was lifted. Well, this lifted. The moratorium was lifted for that. I'm just curious what drove yeah, the $84,000 so, overage. <clears throat> yeah, so 2022 actual amounts. So I don't, I don't, I don't have that information, you know, to, to say what that was. Perry, I can, I can look into that. Okay. I'm sure it's a whole combination of things, but I'm getting that. Well, I was just curious because that's quite an overage compared to what yeah. we were estimating. Yeah. Uh, and 2023 isn't anywhere near that. Yeah. So it just strikes me that's a seventy thousand dollar difference from twenty two to twenty three. So it's just a question. Sure. Yeah. And you know things that contribute is things like rent not coming in. There was time where rent wasn't coming in, and they were, they were kind of given an excuse. The, the, the it was the water break and the uh, Berkway. Yeah, things like that. Water water main break. You know, there was when I came on board, there was a water main break that I had repaired. I understand there was two before me. Yes, yeah. so this was the third one that came up. I also, like I pointed out in my presentation, that when I did that vacancy turnover, there was fifty thousand dollars that wasn't covered in formula funding that I put into that unit because I know that every day that a unit is not rented is a day without rent coming in to make the repairs. So sometimes you have to expend the expenditures to to get the place fixed up so we can get rent to start coming in again. And so that was a big chunk right there, you know, and that, that was uh, last year. So one thing I don't understand is it was subsidies. We talked about it at a meeting. I'm still not clear when you apply for a subsidy or do they tell you we're giving you, do you have to actually apply for it or do they just come up with it? And if they come up with it, what's the weight that I keep hearing at meetings throughout the years living here that we had to wait for the subsidy, wait for the subsidy. then. I mean, isn't there, when they offer it to you, when you ask for it, isn't there a time frame they have to give it to you within? So I'm going to ask Pamela to answer that now. So the, the subsidy is based on fund calculations. It's when our way of asking it for the subsidy is by um, submitting the budget that the board approves. So myself, Carrie, and Carrie and Pace work together on a budget within the, the department's guidelines. Each year, like this past year, they allowed 5% over. So then that's where it's pretty easy. You just kind of add 5% to every line item, except for you might bump off up, uh, beef up maintenance because we know things are coming up. But when you submit the budget, when it gets, when I hit that button, in it's called APHIS is the system that we use for DCD. Um, that's us, that's our request. And then when they approve it, they are approving us. Um, they've approved our subsidy request. We get the money. When, at, at their room, really. And that's why we're constantly asking, saying, hey, you know, we, there's the checking accounts running a little low. We've got a big bill, we've got to send it. But there's, there is literally one guy that sits at DHCD, I own, and I'm so sorry, I can't say his last name. Um, he's the one guy that can push the button to send the money. So he's doing 248 housing authorities, but it's all based on formula of how many units you have, what's your rent coming in, and it's, it really works out. But Pamela, they can also hold it up if we don't have things like the annual, the annual plan has to be approved for us to get our subsidies. We have to vote on the warrant reports, et cetera. We have to do these votes and accept the reports to get our subsidies. So just one correction, the, the warrant won't hold it up. It will, it'll be an audit finding. Okay. But the subsidies, um, definitely not having the annual report or submitting your budget late, things like that will hold up. Getting the subsidy. Any other questions? Are there any adjustments that are taken into consideration with fuel costs that go up and you have no control over that price of oil? And 
So they, they will come in and, and, and they'll help with that too because part of the subsidy truly is to pay for um, staff and utilities. That's what the that that's what DHC is really looking at. Um, so they do take things into consideration. Some years when we have a lot of snow and then your snow removal costs increase, they'll come out with some emergency funding if they have it and give us money for that as well to help. Um, but the, but they truck. I mean, we've had a couple of really good years here where they've given us good budget increases, but there's been a number of years where it's 2%, 3%, very marginal. Um, even I, 10 years ago, level funding, which is terrible. I mean, if you look at the, uh, Bruce had the uh, come up and it's about $600 a unit here. Fair market rate rent in our area is $1,250. So a private landlord is getting twelve fifty for one bedroom unit, and we're getting six hundred dollars. That's why that might look a little bit better because they have more funding for repairs or beautification of a property. Any other questions? Yeah. Bruce, I'm going to ask you anything that concerns you the most in the year to year. Anything that's not getting done, or you're afraid. You're not going to get the money for it. you wish you had is anything driving you crazy yeah um the uh one of the things that i that the expenses just seem to be way too high is everything's gone up from what they what it started so we we put these budgets in by the time it gets to bid, everything's higher so any project's higher but specifically what i like to see is the vacancies turned over and so i'd love to see more funding available for vacancies you know, um, and it's just that we only get a certain dollar amount, but I'd like to see money put into that. Once we get some of this building envelope stuff wrapped up, all these windows is a big project. I, I really want to be able to fix these units up as we turn them over. Um, we have another big project with the doors. You know, that's going to be a big expense to replace all the exterior doors. That's going to help with heat. That's going to help with comfort. And it's going to help with security as well. You know, keeping the doors and everybody safe. And, and it's, you, the goal is actually in pretty good shape too with with again with the windows being done um the boilers were all replaced we had one left i think on Bur no we didn't we gave one left on Berkway. um that's an expense that's coming up that you'll see we did not have funding for it it's coming out of our reserves um which we can talk about at four quarters um but overall once these things are overall they're in really good shape and, and we will be able to do the beautification of, of some folks have nice new cabinet that it, and it does it, it doesn't change the space or the layout but it does it does help and does the department dictate when you turn over the apartment exactly which you have to do the floors and walls and cabinets or do you choose exactly so how we do an inspection and we determine when when somebody moves out we have a move out inspection and so we determine at that point how bad things are. The cabinet doors are falling apart and bought, you know, what, what needs to be done. Tiles are lifting up all over the place. So we go in and do the inspection and that's when we know. We don't, a lot of times, you know, we can do the annual inspection we go through and we fix what we see. But sometimes we have to wait till the place is empty and we start seeing all the, all the real results of the place. Thank you. So I'm trying to understand, you do or do not have money right now to uh, renovate empty apartments? So we have we have funds to do it, not enough to do all the work I would like to do. Let me put it that way. So in other words, the cabinets, can I put some new hinges on and paint them and get by with that? Yes, they'll be serviceable, they'll work. Um, will they be new cabinets that are gonna be good for 20 years? No. So that's the difference that I have to do. So I. We are going to turn them over and it will be serviceable and it will be, you know, safe, decent and sanitary when we turn the unit over. Um, if there were more funds, we would do big renovations of them. We would like to replace them all and go through and work our way around and replace them all. Um, are we applying for all the money that's available to small airline uh, shares? I, I really believe that every everywhere we did, we, we had to apply for the ARPA funds, we had to apply for CPA funds, got an extra 75000 for CPA, got an extra 70000 for ARPA. Um, we put in for emergency funds when we had like the water main repairs and we got approved to do emergency funding for that. So anytime we have an opportunity to apply for that, absolutely. 
uh, I'm going to look for all of those because I know what needs to be done and, and apply. Is it really true that all the pots of mine that are available to small LHAs are, are being approached by us? Oh, absolutely. So, it, and it's, um, and to to our whole board, we have to give a good team. Um, myself, Mayor Billion, and Bruce all know how to vote to all these different pots of money. Um, one one of the things that's kind of holding us up a little bit now, you can get the emergency money, you can get your ADA money, but when the ADA money runs out and you're a housing authority that has a healthy reserve, which we do now, they say use your reserves. Um, and I did also just want to point out to you that there is budget running items too for maintenance and contract costs, which we use for the internal. So and, and for repairs, we have we have budgeted. This is above and beyond what's in our budget. So do you think we have adequate budgeting for um, turnover renovations? Um, so that's a double edged foot. There's no <laughs> money. We money. We, but we do we do a great job with what we have. Um, I'm not a big believer in kind of I, I don't believe in band-aids. So I we make sure that we turn things over properly and, and maintenance is going in there and fixing what needs to be fixed. So the main expense when you turn over an apartment, I imagine, is labor. It's not paint and tiles. It, it's the amount of time that it takes to renovate, clean up and all that. It could be a few minutes back, but it's in housing, at least, it's a fixed cost. We're already there. It's, um, it is, you know, we're saying $10,000 for a cabinet. That's just for the cabinet. We do need to put them in, but that's materials are through the roof. Just well, I'm wondering, you're prevailing wage and everything, right? Are you prevailing we, wage? We, anytime we have a project, then we I submit the prevailing wage for people for projects, yes. And then our you know our staff is paid. Uh, so our, our our staff is not prevailing wage, but they are paid. The maintenance right. staff, the maintenance staff. No, I'm just wondering if we need to budget or try to budget or come up with more money, yeah, so we could turn over apartments faster, yeah. get the revenue. Right. Well, we do look like, for example, this week I applied for um, uh, compliance funds. I had to think of the word, sorry, because part of this window project changed when they did testing and they found asbestos. So I'm working on the budget and the budget just increased with some change orders. So I went to the, my project manager at the DACD and said, hey, can we cover some of this? And he goes, let me look into it for you. He came back to me yesterday and said, yes, compliance funds will pay for the asbestos portion of the windows. So that's going to help with that, you know, because that window project went up on me. We're going to bring in some more funds to help to carry it. So is there any solution at all to turning over the apartments faster? Oh, okay. So the, the, the time that it takes to turn the units over is, is a, a small portion of it is maintenance turning it over. The bigger portion of it is a whole nother topic that we don't really want to get into is something called CHAMP and it's the way they have to, application. The, the application process. So the units can be totally ready and they, in many cases they're ready months before they're actually somebody in the units. Okay. So that's, that, that's not a maintenance issue, that's more of a okay. system-wide, you know, tenant uh, uh, approval issue. Okay. So um, being commissioners, are there any policies you wish you wish we should look at or do or um, anything that we can do to help your work go more smoothly, more efficiently. Yeah, I, I don't actually have any other thing right now. Um, we do need to approve this, you know, that the five-year plan that we've put in place here for you. We worked on it with... Uh, so with you did a five-year plan last year, and year before, so they overlap, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you could see some things that I had. I, I had that slide from last year. We had some things on last year that we were able to move up, you know, in this year's five-year plan. And that's because, in, in a rare case, not normally the ARPA is going to come and give us an extra $70,000. So I could take some of those things out there and bring them in and, and cover those and, and cover those sooner, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. All right. Well, yeah, so please. I think that one thing we always bring up at this meeting is, is the renovation of the, of the apartments when someone moves out. But there's never any discussion about people who have lived here a long time who never had their apartments renovated. They always seem to miss that out. There's many of us that have been here for years that moved into apartments that weren't renovated, and there's never any discussion. So all these people who've been to renovated apartments 
people who have been there for a long time have never been renovated. There's never any discussions where that money's going to come from and when that's going to be done for people who have been here really a long time. Right. So it's a it's a juggling act to try to do any kind of renovation when someone's living in a unit. As we've identified doing the windows, sometimes there's asbestos, there's things to deal with. So it's it's not um, it's not very uh, practical to do renovations while someone's in the unit. However, if things are broken in the unit, we will come in and fix them. So today, at another at one of the other housing authorities we management, the the countertops were bad. Even though they're living in the unit, they're bad. They they got water damage underneath, and I have the guys replacing. We ordered them. We got we got the countertops. We're putting them in ourselves versus hiring a contractor. Saves a little money. So we found a company that made the countertops. I got multiple bids, got a good deal on the countertops. We had them delivered. Our guys are installing today. So when things like that come up, we address them as needed. And we're not going to just leave things broken. Where if, if we get a report that there's something in the unit that needs to be done. Now it's not a complete renovation, you know, of a unit. And again, that's not practical most of the time um, while someone's living in there to be able to disrupt and, and you know, have tarps all over the place and dust flying and whatnot. So, okay. And the fact that re reading through these packets, it always talks about fairness. You're just saying it, it can't be done. You can fix things as they're broken. That still doesn't make up for the. It doesn't make up for the people that are actually wanting a more. I mean, people are coming here out of the out of the clear blue sky. Total renovated apartment. Yeah. That people have been here, and you're saying things can be fixed. There's a difference between fixing something and actually a renovation of an apartment. And we bring that up at meeting after meeting. I think down the road we have to take a look at that. Okay, we can do that. Uh, to me, it sounds like what a homeowner deals with. You know, right. On how she fixes them and break. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say too that so, but the residents that are living here soon mm -hmm. are are going to be reaping the benefits of new windows. You're going to be getting the doors. Um, there is a mechanism in place if there's a um, if there's a some type of um, like the floors. The floors with asbestos in them. Sometimes we have, we have some units with bad floors. Under DCD guidelines, we have to move that person to a, another unit or a hotel or whatever while that's being mitigated and corrected and renovated, and then and their belongings, and then move them back. And we have this in another housing authority, um, another small housing authority, and it's just 400 square feet of time. It's a small unit. They're small six or seven units. And that project is costing over $40,000. And we're doing everything we can to stop it. But you can see that when we have funding of $102,000 a year, if we do one unit, you want, you're pretty much more than logic. So that's why we try to do things like that. Um, we could write a, a, a project, maybe we could get it in for next year, somewhere in the five-year plan, where we're putting in new kitchen cabinets for all residents. And then you can go through um, and make repairs in occupied units. Well, so you think residents are pretty aware of this, like, let us know when something's broken so it doesn't get worse. And... They do, but, but then, too, if they can come, it's my understanding, I, I was not here yesterday, that uh, somebody made a great suggestion about um, putting in new storm doors in the front. So that, that's something we can put in the plan, too. Um, I think we need new front doors as well. But it does, you know, tenant participation does help for sure. All right, well, Bruce and Pamela, you're... You're the ones that know if this is what we should be doing. You need a vote from us to approve it? Yes. Two, we, so we need two votes today. We need a vote on the five-year plan, the capital plan, and then just the overall annual. Yeah, and the annual plan was the one show. We have a maintenance plan. We have an emergency plan. We have, you know, it, 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 it's the, uh, you know, we have policies in place. I move that we uh, vote on the annual plan. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Richie, okay, any other questions about the annual plan? I hope you guys are all going to talk to us, because uh, especially when you guys were, were new to all of this, but uh, any other discussion on uh, the annual plan? I'll accept the vote. All in favor of the annual plan? Aye. 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 Do I mean that? It's proven. I move that we accept the five-year capital, capital improvement plan. Second. Second from Richmond. Any discussion on the five-year capital plan? All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Okay, that was cool. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Please, uh, especially as new commissioners approach you with questions, please uh, be patient. All right, I'm going to move on to the director's report, financials, warrant reports. Anything to discuss on the warrants? So I would just point out on the warrant report, and we could just say, um, so there was a big expense along the way of the um, the boiler. The boiler system went out. There's two units over there that have are left to be replaced. Um, and Charlie Baker, when he was governor, put in um, a green green bill that they won't fund they won't fund fossil fuel heating appliances anymore. So the um, what housing authorities are faced with is that we either go to you know, that would very early, uh, mini splits, which are those uh, heat source pumps, which are five years ago were $5,000 a unit, and now they're probably about $7,000 a unit, um, But and you need one for every room. So that is the astronomic fee, or that we go with boilers. And we made the decision to use reserves to get these last two boilers done. So the one will be consistency throughout the development for when they need to be repairs or replacements. And two, it, the cost was just, um, not just, but um, 9812 $9, dollars For each boiler? Yes. And so we replaced one. We will, we have another one that I expect we'll be replacing in the next year or so. So how are these fueled? They're oil. They're what? They're oil. Well, these are our oil here too. Right. So that's the real cost of heating and cooling is the uh, fuel, not the initial purchase, right? Well, so are these efficient to be? Uh, they are high. They are high efficiency oil. But we did we did put in um, in Belchertown we did the development of four units, and they took out the oil heat and they put in mini splits. And it costs over $110,000 for four units for mini splits. And then my residents in 705s, they pay their own utilities. Um, in 667s, it's included in your utilities. But the tenants there are expanding housing. Their bills were five, six, seven hundred dollars a month, electric bills, which were astronomical. So the housing authority actually ended up taking over their utility bills and changing their their percentage. Is there any chance of solar panels going on our roofs? So we we wouldn't put them on roofs, but we would definitely look into solar panels. So we do have, um, and that's something I am actively looking for because in Belchertown, what I did is we have a solar farm in another community in Commonwealth, and that solar farm pretty much uh, pays the electric bill for all of Everett Acres, which is the development. It's um, 52 units in, in um, Belchertown all electric. 100% electric heated, um, six and seven housing, and that solar field absolutely pays for. So Hadley has a couple of solar fields, and what would they do? I would listen if he says, "Hey, you know, we're the housing authority we're trying to help out people who uh, don't have a lot of resources. Would you consider giving us some cheap power?" Exactly. Well, there's a there's a net metering contract, and when we buy, there is a yeah. gentleman up in um, at, up at the department that we work with that has the connections between the two, okay. um, and we, we're working on that. That's something I see could happen. We don't draw that much power, you know. Okay. Right. And we are aware of solar at Belchertown, also at Amherst. There's solar panels on the roof that haven't worked for a few years. I've been working diligently to get them repaired. And I'm running into a lot of roadblocks, so I know <laughs> I know the difficulties in getting that going. But we are aware of the benefits of solar and are working to okay. get it. Just, and lastly, because I, I hesitate to say it, but I, I have been talking to somebody about solar panels on like portable so Pete, the residents could park under the solar panels and which would keep the snow off your car which is a great advantage and the you get the solar energy at the same you're working time. on that i've been talking to somebody about it it's very expensive but we're 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 working out how it would work how we could yes, like you mass hmm? we would have car ports with solar car panel panel. Oh, it's all over your mess now so yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a uh, good idea Okay, I'm going to start in a rough way. They're all signed, right? Resigned to care of the land. Yep. 
Treasurer's report. Well, I have a question. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I have a question on the one. Yeah. On the truck. Um, truck. The brakes that were done on our truck, $1,600. Um, what did the invoice actually show recently? You looked at the invoice. Is that all four? Uh, all the brakes all around? All invoice. four wheels? Um, you'll notice that that day I was ill and I did not, I wasn't involved in the transactions on that day, so I can't answer your question. Oh, the brakes. It looks like Rich and Dave. No, no. Is that your signature? I'm in on this one, yep. Okay, so Rich and Dave saw that one. I did see that invoice come in, so I, I did per personally approve the invoice when it came in. So it was brakes and rotors all the way around. The truck, it needed, it needed all of them. They, they, they were grinding. They were to the point where they were grinding. And so we had to get them, we had to get them repaired. When that invoice came in, I signed and approved it. And, uh, and I actually had to approve even the quote to get them done. So it was like, well, this is what they tell us. Like, well, we need, we need the truck. We need the brakes. Let's get it done. So I approved that. Disc uh, brakes, all, all four of these. I don't want to give it specific information that I'm not clearly uh, about, but, uh, you know. So the reason I, I ask is because I did front brakes, only front brakes on my truck. It's and, uh, it was about 300 and some odd dollars. So for this all around, I, I, I don't know, did we ever get estimates and we just take our truck to College Street Motors and they do what they do? I, I don't know. The other question I have on it, when our truck is used in Amherst and Belchertown, do they pay a proration share of our, our expenses up to our vehicle? So we haven't in the past, but we are working to get all of it more uh, finally with the county, because what we were doing in the front beginning, those first several years when Amherst was in building Hadley for fully for maintenance and for admin staff, it was just, a, it's a lot, it was a gentleman's type of break. But we are absolutely going to where we're, we're going to only use the truck here. We're, um, we were approved for the, a budget line you know, in Amherst, finally, for a new vehicle for Amherst. So then the staff will have Amherst. So, so that's, that's why I still advocate for an audit. So these things can be discovered for us, because I would not know that unless you just told me that in prior years, that uh, we hadn't done that, but now we're trying to work toward it. That's but why also, I'm still a strong advocate for a four-year run. So you also haven't charged uh, Hadley for when the truck or the vehicles are used from Amherst, right? You haven't charged Hadley. I don't know. That, that, yeah, that, that was my point is that um, as we looked at vehicles, I've been involved in that, you know, what's more practical, a truck or a van? So a lot of times, if we're not plowing with the truck, the van makes sense. If we're not hauling landscaping away. So here at, at Hadley, you get the benefit of a fully stocked van at Amherst. So when there's plumbing problems, when there's things like that here, we have, we have drains clogged all the time. They bring the Amherst van over here because of our agreement. We share all of our equipment. We don't have a full array of equipment for each housing authority, but we, if we have it at one of the three, we do use it over here. So we get, we have a van that comes over here stocked with supplies and we just charge those supplies too badly after we use them. But we, and it, it, it goes both ways is what I'm getting at. There's a great job on that van, I'm be picking it up, right? It would. Even though Hadley gets the benefit of it, because I see that van over here all the time. It, it is Amherst, and it's the Amherst, Amherst and the Amherst van. Yeah. Okay. So Bruce, you are the one that looks after the invoices for repairs. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Well, a couple of months ago, we had repairs on the plow. Didn't we? I saw that in one of the warrants prior. February, January, February, we had some. Issue with the plow. Yeah. The, I don't. I don't. Rem, I don't remember. I just that don't remember seeing it. So yeah, I don't think all those meetings. I I prove every single invoice yeah. from those three housing authorities. Just and, ask them. and I do. I do look at them, and I do remember the breaks because it was pretty recent. You know, it was a few couple months ago. 
I don't I don't remember the plow, but it, it had right. to come through me. It Carrie does not approve them until I approve them. Okay. I know other people that use college street quarters and they don't complain, so I hope they're being fair. Moving on, or at least I'm sure no. Yeah, we just need approval. I I move that we approve the warrant report from 6123 to 6123 and the warrant report. Which, do you want to do it separate? We can do both. Okay, and the warrant uh, transactions from 615 2023 to 615 and 615 2023. Because remember, we do these every two weeks. That's why they're not a full month. Uh, and then, and that's it. It's uh, true. Let's see. Could you the totals of Oh, so for the, and to include the amount for the warrant from 6-1-2023 as $2,980.97 and the uh, amount of the warrant for 6-15-2023 and 6-15-2023 is, just a minute, $29,915.84. Well, I could entertain a motion to accept both these warrants. I'll make the motion accept. I second. Any other discussion? Yes, I will continue to vote no on the warrants until we have our right. Fair enough. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So uh, three in favor, two against. Uh, uh, next on the agenda, treasures report. Is that? Yep. Under the new this field. Yep. Yeah, separate. So that is um. This is just an informational one again. It's this one doesn't require a vote. Okay. Do we have any questions? Please let's all look it over and bring questions next month if you don't have the right now. It's fine. All right. Property managers report you've been doing the vacancies. Is that Mary Billing? No, that's that? me. I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna be doing it on Um so the property uh the vacancies first. So is there are three at, this is as of 531. There were three. Golden Court apartments and two Berkeley apartments so for a total of five units. Um, there is a, a, a tenant for one of the Berkeley units. So that'll be that'll be correcting itself. Um, and there is we do have a um, had a vacancy this month as well too. We'll have a vacancy that we add to it. At Berkeley? At Golden Court. So Berkeley is going from two to one? Yep. Golden Hope, hopefully it will be, we'll have somebody coming in too, but again, we'll have a discussion on champ at another time. Uh, but what we do have a vacancy. We had two legal actions this past week. 30 days. Okay, so right now there's three buildings. Yes. And then for the TAR, um, we are aggressively working it, really trying to get folks to, um, there's still wrapped money of the, available. So we do have um, several people that are not paying um, rent for various reasons or fell behind for various reasons. And there's a combination of uh, working with them to get wrapped money, which is from, from the department, ultimately from HUD to help folks when they're in trouble, um, get into repayment agreements. So you can spread it out over six months up to a year. Um, and then also court action um, with the hopes of getting a court ordered rental agreement. Um, two of these, so the, the 667, which is the uh, senior dis disabled, has a high balance. But of that were the two legal actions that I was telling you about that are totally just under $8,000. So that number will clear up. We'll, we'll be bringing um, sometime in the next month or two some write-offs. And what happens with the write-off is um, if, a, if somebody's passed away, it just, it just goes away. We write it off to it takes off the books. 
if um, somebody is still around, we send out notices, they send out a couple of notices um, to try to collect it, and then it goes on to a collection report, so a credit report. And then we are also now working with the Department of Revenue, and the Department of Revenue will attach uh, lottery winnings, tax returns, all of that, and seize the money and return it back to the Housing Authority. So we're, we're hoping to get these clear. Is the 667 the uh, Golden Court? Yes, it is. Yeah. So the late fees have jumped up from March from 265 to April 332 to now May 1883 hours, $1,500 increase. Well, and that's other charges too, because um, for the two court actions that we had, there's legal fees. That yeah, you put on there. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Here. I just don't understand, Pam, why property manager reports are not given by the property manager when we have a property manager. I don't. I think it's a good idea if a property manager comes to meetings to understand what's happening and without just hearing from you and, and Mary and management and not getting a sense of what's happening by coming to one of these meetings. I, I personally think as a board member that down the road when you hire another property manager that they should attend meetings instead of you and Mary becoming the property manager doing it. So that's, an act of, that's actually not in their job description and that's not what typically happens at the 248 housing authorities across the Commonwealth. And as board meetings have become more and more contentious, it becomes a little bit too much for a staff member to have to handle. So we're, I'm, it is my job, the boss comes with me, I know all of it, everything that's going on with the agency. If I don't, I'll find out. Um, but it's my job to report to what's happening in the housing authority. I'd like to hear some feedback from other people other than what you're saying about that property right, management report. I'm, I'm happy to give you feedback. No, I mean, not you. I'm talking about people in the hierarchy of, you know, the, the hierarchy of, what? of DHCD, of people or people who are the running other housing authority. Does their right. property manager actually give the property report? Yeah, no, they don't. That's, they why, don't. that's why it's under the executive director's report. Exactly. And then when you when you do get that training from DHCD, which I don't believe they've sent it to you yet, um, but let me know if they, if they have actually. It'll show you that the staff fall under me. They don't fall under the board. And it is an executive director's report. It's my job to give you the report. So why do we even call it property manager's report? Why isn't it just it's included under executive director's report? Right. Which is Capital facilities, work order reports. You see the reports here. Again, I just provided those reports uh, for them. Um, the capital updates. <coughs> um, don't have any board votes. Uh, just the, the window project uh, got delayed because of change orders, so the windows didn't get ordered. So whenever they finally do get ordered, I'll get the lead time. Until I, until they get ordered, I don't have the lead time of when they're going to be here. And so last time it was five to six weeks, so I think it's going to be five to six weeks after we you know, place the order before we get to that. We've been uh, anticipating you know that for a long time, and unfortunately... There's delays that happen, but they are, are are legitimate. Some of them is me seeing the way it was designed and what was going out and challenging it and asking that to be corrected before we place the order. So <clears throat> as far as the work orders, we do have some completed work orders from the last couple months. We also have any that are still open. Um, I noticed that on one of them there, it said a bathroom vanity. I, I, I let you know that I did order a vanity, you know, just getting that vanity in takes a little bit, a bit of time. So, and that's an example of something breaks and we order and put new ones in. So um, really not a vote required, but I'm happy to answer any questions about the work orders or you know, the applicable. So the third column in your reports is the date of completion of the work, correct? One of the, the one of the pages, yeah, that actually page one of four yeah. um, should show, yeah, completed, completed. Okay, so those are all dates following the following pages show the date that the work was completed. Yes. All right. And um, as far as uncompleted work requested, 
Is that just the one on the front page? Yes. Yeah, because we take care of those when they come up. Requested work order construction. Yeah, that's good. Okay, commissioner's discussion. Discussion of how to do the warrant signing. So once again, Carrie Monley has a name wrong. Mommy. Mommy, thank you. Has requested that we do automatic check signing. And I've told her that's okay with me as long as the warrants continue to come to us uh, immediately after the checks go out. Uh, I don't know if that's good accounting practice or not, but I understand why she doesn't want to have to run into Hadley. Uh, Risa, you're the treasurer. You're really the one who should decide, in my opinion, how the checks get signed. Well, I don't think it should be my sole opinion. We have Harry, who's very, uh, has so much experience in accounting, auditing, et cetera. <laughs> Sue's been around for a long time as a tenant. Richie's been around for a long time, knows all about this. Uh, he's got a lot of board experience with in housing. Good. So if this is not for Carrie's convenience. This is not at all was this ever discussed as Carrie's convenience. No, okay. this, this is, she just looks at this, how we forever before. Um, so it's to avoid late payments? It's to avoid late payments and fees and interest. How we did it before worked and it worked well. If there's an error, like like Harry has pointed out, an error before, it will get caught. Okay. And we don't need to uh, delay paying to make sure that okay. the money going gotcha. into this, the- Thank you. Yeah. What I would suggest is mm -hmm. an accounts payable policy that we, um, if we could see here, an accounts payable subcommittee. We do have a policy right now, but it is outdated. And as Harry had pointed out, you know, during the pandemic, we had a board vote to go through this. But the but the, the way we were doing it with the automatic signatures. But if we're gonna go to automatic signatures or make any real change, we really should, especially for something as serious as the Pell game, update the policy, bring it to the board, the board approves it, and then we move forward. All right. I agree. So I'm looking for volunteers to be on the accounts payable subcommittee. Well, to review the policy. Yeah. Treasure, Richie. Yeah, Richie and I were already on that policy okay. procedure. Howard, would you be happy to help out with that? So two at a time. You can all meet two at a time. What? You can. Oh, Rich and I are on policy oh, procedure. Okay. And we'll just add accounts payable to us. Okay. Would you would you let Harry take a look at the policy after you come up with it? Of course, the whole board has to look at it. I'd like Harry to review it before it goes to the whole board, oh, okay. I'm trying to say, because he's got experience. Absolutely. Okay. Is that a paper? Yeah. yeah. And I'd like make sure that we have live commissioners yeah. be on the uh, signature. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I mean, you can bring it to all of us at the same time. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Just take it on the button. I want to see. All right. So you think you might have that by next month? Is that fair? Is it? Can, is there a lot to do? Well, we'll see if we we'll we'll look at at what we have now. We'll look at uh, current credit types mm -hmm. that make that make sense for us, and we'll glom them together, okay. fine tune it, and then send it to Harry to see what he, you know, if he has any more. Okay, good. I'll do that next. Uh, and we'll only do that because we can't be in a subcommittee with more than two people. Just don't do it. We will not deliberate through an email. We will just for informational purposes. Only. I've stopped doing emails to everybody. I know, right? Me too. You've seen that, right? You've seen, you've seen nothing coming from me. Anymore. That's right. Nothing. So, okay. so, so you we might... will send it out for informational purposes only to the entire board. Okay. How's that? No deliberation for the email. Yeah. Good. And you might look at how other towns are doing it. Other yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay. That's typically what we do. Is that we'll, we'll write to the other housing authorities and ask for copies of their policies, see what it seems to fit for us um, what's legal, make sure we fucked in and so yeah. So as a, um, as a selectman, I remember the town administrator, uh, managers have a network through email. You have that with other housing authorities? Yes, yeah. so we do. So we have a Western Mass Executive Directors Association, plus we do the Mass Naro, which um, is a conglomerate of all 248 housing authorities. Um, and um, we have the NERC model, which is new. 
excuse me, the, the New England Conference of, of housing professionals okay. that we, we have emails, we have chat rooms, uh, we do the conferences. When we go to conferences, uh -huh. it's just days of connecting and can you send me this and okay. working. And this is the narrow that you're now on the board for? So thank you. I'm, I'm on the Mass Narrow uh, Board of Directors and I chair their statewide, statewide and I chair okay. the Professional Development Committee and I'm also on the NERC Narrow Professional Development. So for New England as well. Right. We're lucky, Jay. Yeah. We so got her. As we um, want to review policies, we'll take probably two or three at a time. You could send those out and say, hey, is anybody, let me refresh that policy recently could you share with us is that what you would do yeah we, we typically don't do two or three at a time we'll be winner because they are they are a good amount but okay. unless they're doing that here's the glory not speaks any all right what else we got so uh management agreeing resigning uh so we're not resigning i'm sorry that shouldn't that shouldn't okay. be it so our management agreement is going to expire at the end of September. Okay. So I have in the packet for you folks, the public housing notice, um, and it is from 2020, but it is the latest one with all the attachments. Of, um, and it not only does it cover a management agreement, what it would also cover is um, if we need to get an interim executive director. So that's in there too, for whatever reason. Um, and then was there information in there, Pam, too, about just hiring an ED? Uh, there is another whole EHN about hiring an ED. So I do think that the board should be reviewing this yeah. and deciding. Um, and the Amherst board has to review these. And it, it is, um, but both boards have to come to an agreement to sign on management. Oh, so we have to consider meeting, I suppose, with the Amherst board to discuss. So this is Commissioners to commissioners. No, no, no. We meet for ourselves. What? We need uh, all of this. No, this yeah. whole thing. Um, well, yeah. A lot of it is um, is just attachments. So, like the management mm -hmm. that we have, it's this is that template. Okay. So they're just templates. So anyway, it's a huge packet, but the the PHN the notice itself is much better. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So what but, I'm trying to say is, we would have to explore whether Amherst is interested in continuing a management agreement with Hadley. No, what you do is we fill all this out or have. Well, you have to decide as a board. We have you to decide, decide as a board if the meeting want to continue or re up the management agreement contract with Amherst. At which time, if we decide, then we sign it, et cetera, and then send it to Amherst, and then they decide. But so these next couple of months, and I would say we should really have it done by August. Yeah. The Hadley board needs to decide, do they want a management agreement with yeah. Amherst? Do they want a management agreement with another housing authority? Do you want your own executive director back? What direction does Hadley want to go in this movie? Sure. Was it when you first came on four years ago, was the board given this uh, Ben Stone uh, you know, this is a thorough uh, management agreement. Explain well, it, that didn't come out till 2020. So the original, when did you start? What year? It was 2018. And it was a PHN from a, an earlier time, but it was almost identical. Uh, the management agreement has not changed, the actual agreement itself. But the board was given that. And they also had a proposal from the Amherst that outlined the staffing plan, what we were planning on doing. So they absolutely reviewed all of that. And being a tenant who, who still to this day does not feel like the management agreement is legitimate because of the way it was handled, because of a sign, you know, three years after, supposedly signed, not by the Mr. Burkhardt's name's not on it, it's just signed by DHCD and went blank all those years. You can use COVID up to a certain point. And then when they lift the COVID sanctions, there was a big period of time where this management agreement could have been signed. I feel personally as a as a uh, as board member that I'd like to have a private attorney look at this contract and discuss it with them to see if they think it's a legitimate. We, even if it's ending, I still want to know if it was legitimate all this time because we know when everyone sort of pushes it away all the time. So actually, they didn't push it away. What what happened is, and you have the gentleman sitting here who signed the contract and who voted on it. So it wasn't supposedly, and the undersecretary of the Department of Housing absolutely ratified the contract. 
So yeah, there, there's Ricky nothing signed. What do you mean that Richie he shot He voted for it. It, it's, and it's the digital service, and it was the governor allowed that to happen. But during COVID, then why did we go to meetings where we said snail mail, lost in the mail, encumbered? Because no, I don't have a contract, and all of a sudden there's a contract that's signed. That sort of contradicts. We to There's a lot of sadness. right, and we, we keep saying the same thing over. Because I'm not satisfied as a but as then, a board member, and and if he's not the one who's supposed to be signing it, Richie is supposed to be signed by Michael Burkhardt. No, it's signed by both commissioners. It's signed by the commissioner of okay. Belchertown. Right. Yeah, excuse me. Abby, so what do you mean to say about that? Yes, so it's just a nice talk. We can't keep rehashing things. Well, yes, because, like, because we're not. Uh, how but there's, there, sometimes you have to agree to disagree. And again, this is where it's just taking us so much time. But it's an important thing. Without a con without a legitimate contract. We do have a legitimate contract. Right. Yeah, 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 well, are these our business because she wants us to sign another contract. No, actually, that's yes. not what I'm saying. I'm fully outlining your opportunity to go with another housing authority or for you to hire your own executive director. Yeah. This is so commissioner. She's giving us Thank a packet, the entire packet yeah. for us to decide Thank what you. this board or the academy wants to do. But you're not interested in finding out up to this point if it's it's there's a legitimate contract in the first place because of the lack of signatures. No, I don't, I don't think that's the so only thing that I raised, if I may, Mr. Chair, the only thing that I had raised months ago was that when we finally got the signed contract by the DHCD, that we didn't have the respective chairs re sign that and then the DHCD, I think it was February something, whatever. That's the only thing that I brought up. That we took the time to finally get a signed contract from the DOCD, it would have been nice to have both respective chairs at the time sign it, then the DHC sign it, and, we, and then it's only seven months from February to September. So, no, I'm not interested right now in what has happened because we're three months away from the end of this operation. So, we have to be smart. Or we're going to continue with whatever we all decide. That's all I had said, Bambi. Public comments. Public comments. Public comments. Public comments. Public comments. Public comments. Again, again, again. Wi Fi in this room. Last month you said you sent out a work order. It doesn't take a month to put Wi Fi in. Oh, really? So, to, uh, Bruce, any comment on how to get Wi Fi? Uh, they were just making comments. Uh, yeah, yeah, I actually met, had um, our company come out here, met with them. They recommended certain parts we needed to get the Wi-Fi in to make it a secure system. I ordered the parts. They called me yesterday. The parts are in. I says, could I schedule it for Friday? They said, we're booking two weeks out. So I set up an appointment for, I believe it's the 18th. What's the name uh, of the when they're going to, when they're coming, oh. the 18th of next month. To come and install the separate Wi Fi, the guest Wi Fi. Thank you. And uh, who's the company? Entree Technologies. Entree out of where? Out of um, West Springfield. West, West Springfield. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, well, um, I was interested in Bruce saying that there is maintenance on 24 hours a day. If that's so, <laughs> why are we paying? a $65 lockout fee, or if a tenant is locked out, which would happen to my next door neighbor who couldn't call, I, I look after her. Um, <clears throat> I was, we were told to call a locksmith. Do you understand the problem? Yeah, it, um, yes, I do understand the problem. So maintenance is on call for 24 hours, but if they're deployed, my understanding is that it's a minimum of a three hour because their union duty, their union. So if somebody gets locked out after hours, every uh, every call requires the maintenance man under union contract to get three hours of pay. So the other thing is, is that the $65 lockout fee, I don't think has ever been Nobody has ever said it's ever been required. It, it's just never been required so far. Nobody's paid such. It is true. 
It's been I, in the tenant newspaper. It, right? it, no, it's never been applied to a tenant ledger. And what we do, it, it's a it's a deterrent, and we work with people. Um, usually, when somebody gets locked out, it's a it's a one off thing. It doesn't yeah. happen very often, and you understand that's happening. So we we take care of the locking. Exactly. Um, and the and Gamers Locksmith, who we we use for this service, bills the housing authority, mm -hmm. and we don't bill back in these one off, even sometimes a two off instance. Um, if there seems to be something going on with the resident where they're they're having trouble misplacing their key and thing, we come up with a different work, uh, a different way of we'll we'll get you a lockbox, which again the, the housing authority pays for, so you get a lockbox. Um, or we might have to go to other areas of maybe the resident service coordinator working with them to say, do you have a family member or a friend close by that can key? Um, because it, it can become burdensome. We actually don't have a lot of lockout, no, no lockout calls. All right, so we will work on the lockout uh, in addition. It yeah. sounds like it's not as too I mean, if they have to get paid, you mean they get paid for three hours on top of what they get paid for working? No, if, if, if a maintenance person called in after hours to go take care of a lockout situation, any situation, an, an emergency water leak, whatever, they get paid a minimum of three hours. That's and it's under contract, it's by contract, isn't it? Contract. It's contract. Yeah. You know, I, all right, Judy, what else you got? We'll fix your mm -hmm. I myself and, an, and an, at least a few other tenants would like to see this room for this meeting rearranged. Not this long table. Like to see it back over there. So the board can see everybody that's working here. This does not work. <clears throat> um, what's wrong with the current arrangement? It's uh. We can see all of you, and you can see all of us. I know, but it's. Yes. <laughs> I can't come up with the word. Uh, we'll it's talk not conducive to being together, thinking and looking at each other in the eye. Yeah, I like working to together. To like I like everybody around the round table. Exactly. So it, it makes it very, very hard for Alex to film if um, he's got to be looking at backs of half. The I table. asked Alex about it. Mm -hmm. You can film a round table. You want to be in the middle of a round table? We can, we can film a round table. We got Al. We can film a round table. Really? Yes. I all got to bring my Al and the computer. Okay. So the other reason why we went straight was because the tenants, when they're at the at that desk, that table. Commissioners would have their backs to the residents. Mm -hmm. We got complaints from residents yeah. that the commissioners had their backs. Um, so this doesn't work for you, Judy? I mean, you can see all of no, us. No, no, it doesn't. And it's not just me. It's a few other tenants as well. Well, maybe they it, could come it, and The table. round table gives you the opportunity to all see each other. Eye contact. Not this, yeah, eye contact, looking at each other, I, making I, decisions together, I, not one at this end and one okay, I'll, I'll talk that over with the commissioner. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll think about that. Okay. Um, uh, we're also sort of a follow up on what Sue brought up is the lack of uh, property manager. There has been a turnover of five property managers. Now we don't have any property manager, and the hours are down to practically nothing. Okay. The office is not being managed. Okay. Thank you. So I was on my list to ask you about today. Um, what's what's happening with so staff? It's the fourth property management. There's lots of turnover in the industry. The yeah. industry is in in the world. If you're reading any kind of business news, you know people <laughs> yeah. are people are having trouble with. We're not talking about that. We're talking about housing right here. Housing. Turnover. And I'm telling you, it's housing. And I just the turnover has been so you advertise that it's hard to find here. It, it does, and I will point out too that. How many executive directors did you have in a 10-year period? And Hadley has always had huge turnover. Mm -hmm. Huge turnover. Yeah, had no, in a 20-year period, we had a lot. Darlene and Howard and Mary. That's 20 and, years, though. It, no? Okay, okay. I don't want to, yes. I don't want to so there's a, big turn, there's a big turnover. And we are staffing the, uh, the office now 16 hours a week. Here in Hadley? Yeah, for the summer. Yeah, okay. That's where and, we're, and we're moving the application office out of Hadley. Back to Amherst. Okay. Uh, so normally people would come to Hadley and 
Ask for application form. But we started that because, again, we thought it would be a good, it's centrally located, there's mm -hmm. good parking, um, it would give family more hours. But then there's complaints that the the person working the applications doesn't know anything. It's, so I'm putting a ton of staff on Hadley, including my director of facilities, our office administrator, my director of housing, property managers, application. All of these people are working lots of hours, well and above the 16 hours that Hadley is, and we're we're not getting the results here that we need to get. Then why does the door say Monday and Friday only and Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday by appointment? When all along we've had somebody here five days a week, occasionally on Wednesday, but always Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. I, right, I just we're getting the sixteen hours. The days go by with nobody here. And well, they are actually they are actually working. They're available by phone. And Hadley is a sixteen hour a week housing authority, according to the department. So I would like to add to that that there are at least four tenants that live here that can't use the phone. They don't know how. Not, it's not available to them. They need to walk down here to um, get a work order, for instance. There's no one here. And they don't, and the phone system doesn't work for all the tenants here. It just doesn't. It's complicated. They don't know how to get in touch with management. You're talking about trying to get a live person. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I have the same experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There should be a way for tenants to um, be able to put in a work order, or and and I'm speaking of one of the tenants in my building specifically who does not know how to run this, run her life, and I, and I say you, it so I tell her you have to go down in the office. She tenant. comes down here. She has professional knowledge. Excuse me. The tenant has professional knowledge. So I am so. aware. She, I, I send her down here to get a work order. The work order never got to the maintenance. When maintenance was here, I said, did you get the work order to change the screens? No. I, but, but maintenance, who is the best part of Amherst House, Went over to her apartment and did it. Okay. Kudos to right, maintenance. Here. Everybody's hearing you. Thank you, Judy. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. yeah. Where are the paper agendas that we're going to be put out for people? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, I would like to propose changing the no smoking policy. The no smoking policy, as I understand it, is 30 feet away from the building. 30 feet, not two feet, not one foot, 30 feet away from the building. Mm -hmm. It's also my understanding that the smoking policy in Belchertown um, states if you get, you get a notice if you're smoking you know, in a improper area, you get a notice. If you get, if they get another complaint about those people smoking, you get a second notice. After that, they get a violation of the lease. We don't have that on our smoking policy. And the smoking policy here is not being, it's not being um, taken care of. So it's people not are smoking. Is what you're saying? I'm sorry. It's not strong enough policy. Absolutely, and it's not just that. It's not. It's like it's not being enforced by management. That is the problem. Okay. Not being enforced by management. Right. People like myself and others. That. Here's a quick answer. We're enforcing the Hadley uh, smoking policy in Hadley, but it does bring up a great uh, opportunity to revisit the, the uh, non-smoking policy in Hadley. And each of the three housing authorities we have have a different housing authority, a different policy. Amherst, there is absolutely no smoking on the grounds anywhere. Uh, in Belchertown, it's a dedicated smoking area. In here, it's 25 feet, I think, uh, but I'm not sure. It's a certain distance, to certain, uh, distance from it. But they, it's, I would fully support that. I'm a non-smoker. I would fully support saying nobody smoke. But 
it's something that we should start talking to tenants about real quick mm -hmm. um, and getting a tenant input on it because it directly affects the lives of the tenants mm -hmm. and then um, coming up with a change and bringing it to the board to change the policy. Logistically, with the way our buildings are structured, could you have a, like you just mentioned, a designated area so they're not even the 25 or 30 feet or 10 feet, they go to this area, they smoke, and then they go home? Yeah, you could have a couple of stages <laughs> along. Well, they go home, they smoke, and then and if they have to go back, they go back and smoke again. But in bad weather, I, I, I don't know. It is. So we have we have benches with the smoking junk Joe and sign and filter to them. Um, it, it's it's a good policy, but people don't always follow policies too. No. So, um, and we've had people talk up over the years about using capital money to get bus stops for smokers, um, and that doesn't seem to be the right use of public funds either. But um, absolutely, you could work on the policy and, and change it. Okay. A tenant chat topic of tenant chat. Again, if we had an LTO here, <laughs> she's doing the job too. Uh, uh, anything else, Judy, or have you as we said? Sure, we have another speaker. Oh, yes. Kids, it's this time of the year. There's a lot of kids that go their own license. A lot of kids from out back go through here on their bikes. Yeah which is fine, but the cars that are out there, they come in and are thinking they're going to get, go through. And I've clocked them at 50 and 60 miles an hour, and just in the couple, last couple of days, and the kids are right there. So what do you so it's an accident waiting to happen. Do you, you think we need signage? I don't know exactly what to do about it, Shotgun. Okay. No idea. Yeah. So, so now we do have speed bumps um, that are they're they're going to be putting them out into the world. There's the temporary ones that go out in the summertime. Um, and Bruce has signs on order. Um, there's a ton of signs out there. I do think with the construction that's going on Route Nine, I think people are cutting through. Yeah. Also, the um, GPS tells people that Berkway and Golden Court are cut throughs and they're not. But you cannot cut through, right? No, there's a gate. Right. There's a gate. Oh, and the signs yeah. say that this is not a throughway. Yeah, right. You can't see the signs. And by the way, I did add another sign. So we had, we actually have three, there's three signs from this way. It says not a throughway. There's one right at the end. The other side only had one right at the street. And so you could easily miss it. It was a small sign. I put a rather large sign in about 20 feet, and that was just installed in the last few weeks. So, uh, so we ordered it put in, so nobody coming from Berkeley would they would realize it's not a freeway as well. Plus, that gate is locked all the time. So, right. that's, stupid. that's the main thing right now. They're really out on their bikes. As a matter of fact, in the 20 odd years that I've lived here, I've never seen so many. So many. Yeah. Kids on bicycles, which have a lot. A car will be right behind them. So when God knows how fast. You know, we need some slow signs and some no no through way. Speed bumps. Cars speed bumps. don't enter unless you live here. You need a speed bump as you first come in. So it's and then and the thing is is there's a lot of people who come around where that apartment is, what's the latest apartment where Jack Yusko used to live with, what number was that? 47. 47. It's on a curve there, so people come in real fast, and you're always, you get them straight on. Sounds like an important thing to do. We're not going to solve the problem today, but uh, let's let Pamela and Bruce work on that. Who's not here tonight? It doesn't matter. I just say one thing that's happening. I wanted to bring up three things to the tenant. One is the refrigerator being broken. It has a sign on it. And the sign disappeared, but we have to have a working refrigerator. We have functions down here where people come and we need to keep, we've been bringing up that refrigerator. Is there a work order been in place for it? Yeah, but, well, we've mentioned it. it it's, we don't own it to put a work order, but we've mentioned it in so many well, meetings. I'll check and it's order. also never, it, I don't think it's up to the capacity of coldness. We need to get a thermometer. Okay, we'll check it. Number two is the water outside. I understand that one of the other housing authorities that Amherst manages has now put back the water on the side of their units so we can water our gardens again. 
So, and then it's not, we used to be able to water our gardens in one day, and one day the, they got sawed and shut years ago without telling tenants. Now I understand that one of the housing authorities management has turned on the water for tenants to be able to. Okay, so why is that not across the board? Because you're an independent housing authority. And these are data. data, 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 data. data. So you're managing us. We're not independent. You are independent. Okay. Okay. Number three is so, we brought up at many meetings about this phone call. Like Judy said, it's hard for a lot of elderly and disabled people to call the office. They get amherst, and then they get all these extensions. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm going over here. Are you chairing a meeting? I don't Please think it's a person to be not to remind you you're being rude. That's very respectful. We brought this up at so many meetings about the telephone system here because of an elderly and disabled housing authority. Uh, people can no longer call into Hadley. They have to call into Amherst. It's very it's confusing. Push this, push this, if you want to dial by name. We have to relook at this and not just keep talking about it. I've talked to Mike Burkhardt about that. I hope he's working on it to get Folks, this so is the to call day right into here. It's a the executive director. These are day to day. I just have so to see. Might go, but so folks can call and have the telephone number, and it automatically goes to the Amherst number. It's, so it's they're dialing an old familiar number. The second point of it is, is that Entree, our new IT folks, are clearing up the whole system. They are working on it. And I understand it's frustrating, and I understand that I, the, the Wi Fi is frustrating, but again, there's. The world is understaffed. I'm, I'm carrying around a new laptop because my old laptop died, um, and I have internet connection, and that's it. And I have to wait until the 13th of the month to get all my stuff back on my laptop, too. And I have to run the authorities. Well, we hear you. So it's, it's, it'd be great to have a live But it's not about being frustrated. It's about some people just can't do it. But you're having tenants that can't reach But it. when the tenants who are elderly and disabled, which is... I, I, as I discussed in a prior meeting, right, it's the vast majority of our clientele, when they call the Social Security office, when they call the Senior Center, when they call any office, it's the same thing. There's no longer funding for a receptionist. You're just in. Well, then you have to make the phone system easier for people to use. And that's what, exactly what we're doing. We're working with our trade to clear that out. And when is this going? When is this going? We keep hearing about it. It's a problem. So they just started in May, and everything takes time. Unfortunately, it's, and it's very frustrating for everybody. So, free to follow up on that. Thank you. I have one. There's always work to do. One, yeah, more, one more. Uh, the recycle bin. Recycle bin. Out here. It's disgusting. Beyond disgusting. And one of these days, there's going to be a bear in the dumpster. It is stinky. It's it's overflowing. It's absolutely hideous. Okay. It's no sanitation whatsoever around the dumpsters. Uh, no, actually, I have, I have a call. I will be calling USA today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, it's all good Thank stuff, you. guys. Thank you for speaking up. Get more neighbors to come speak up, please. <laughs> Next meeting? Is Next meeting, no. yeah. We have 11 or 10. Yeah, we only did 10 today because we all... Some of us all thought that they were uh, uh, planning the five year plans at the same time. So let's see, that means July. What time would we like to meet in July towards the end, right? The last Tuesday of the month, is that when we're meeting? Yes, the yeah. last Tuesday of the month. That would be the 25th. That would be the 25th. That 11th. 25th at 11. Yeah. July 25th at 11. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Motion to adjourn. Is that Maureen? I move that we adjourn. Oh, wait. I because I see it so much because I'm right out there. And in the evening, you might not think it would be bad. Things would slow down. The little kids, and I mean preschool, are out here on their scooters, oh. not bikes, they're scooters. Oh, they don't have know to be there. No idea that they could be just <clears throat> wiped right out. So maybe we should and I suggest think that maybe attention should be brought to the people that live there. Yeah. Parents, yeah. really, because. Something will happen and it will be devastating.
All right, thank that you. That really is what I do see the need for. It's much, if not more, bring the debt. Okay, seems to make sense. Thank so, you, Board. I move that we adjourn. Second. Thank you. All favor of adjourning. Thank Aye. you very much.